Hey guys, Sean with Long Long Honeymoon here. Today we're taking a look at our new electric bikes. We have here the Electric XB 2.0 and the Electric XB 2.0 step-through model. Back when I was growing up, this would have been the girl's bike and that would have been the boy's bike. But we don't use those antiquated terms anymore. <laughs> These are electric bikes. Electric bikes, quite simply, are bicycles that are equipped with lithium ion batteries and electric motors. They can provide what is called a pedal assist or a boost from that motor. You can dial up or down the intensity of that boost however you like. You can even turn it off and ride them like a normal bike. But if you want a little push, of assistance from the electric motor, these bikes will give it to you. The promise of these bikes for an RVer is that they're portable and they give you roughly 45 miles of range. For example, we're camping at a beautiful lake environment right now at the house of some friends and family members. We don't want to unhitch our rig. So if you don't want to unhitch, but let's say you want to go to a restaurant that's five miles away, you can hop on your e-bikes and you can get there and back without breaking a sweat. So they really are a game changer from that standpoint. The range you can get on these bikes will vary depending upon your weight and the terrain. So let's come in a little bit closer and we'll take a look at these bikes. As I said, these two models are functionally exactly the same except for the paint and the fact that this is a step-through design and the other is not. They have a slightly different shape of battery just to accommodate the different frame. In these electric bikes, there is a control panel display in the center and you can toggle that on and off, little on and off button. And this display will show you kind of the amount of fuel left in your lithium battery through what's called the energy bar. And it's kind of a rough estimate, it's not super precise, but an estimate of how much life is left in the battery. You've got a speedometer and you have this PAS, which stands for pedal assist. And see, you can turn off pedal assist, have it at zero, or you can dial it up. And I gotta admit, I do enjoy dialing it up. All the way to 11, no, actually to five. So the top pedal assist is five. And on the bottom, you've got a little odometer and you can toggle through some different features like a trip meter, battery voltage, there's a little timer and so forth. So uh, some cool features here. Now these out of the box are class two bikes. And I want to point out, they come previously assembled. So somebody's already done all the hard work at the factory of assembling the bike for you, which I really appreciate because I don't assemble bikes for a living. And when I've tried to put together bikes, it usually takes a lot longer than I, anyone would like. So I love the fact that they ship them previously assembled. And they ship in a folded up state, of course. The brilliant feature of these bikes is this folding nature. And see, it's, it's super easy to pop open the center lever and fold the bike back. And so I just wanna show you. Uh, and it's super easy to put together a bike completely from a folded state. I would say I typically can put the bikes together in less than 90 seconds. And now for the assembly portion of the competition, I'm gonna put this bike together right before your very eyes. Go, go, go. Well, that's basically it. <laughs> 25 seconds to put it together. Now this makes the point, you can leave the battery inside the frame for faster assembly and disassembly and just charge it straight through the frame. So we're just gonna leave the batteries in ours most of the time. Now, if you want to bring the batteries indoors for charging, you can always remove them, bring them inside and charge them if you wish. The battery weighs seven pounds, so you can also remove it if you want to reduce the weight of the bikes during transport. But I like the simplicity of leaving them in the frame. All right, guys, we're gonna fold this bike up and put it away. Let's see how long it takes me. 
This could be a little timed event at the Olympics. You can fall in the pedals. Up with the kickstand. Don't pinch your fingers. We are donezo. How long? How long did it take? Oh, uh, like 40 seconds. 40 seconds to put it away. All right. Yes, I timed myself. And like all things in life, you're going to get a little bit faster and better at it the more you practice. But they fold in two places. They fold there, and they also fold uh, up here at the uh, control stalk or handlebars area. So being able to fold the bikes means they're very compact. They will fit not only beneath our tonneau cover in the bed of our truck, they will also fit in the back seat of our humble but sturdy super cab truck, good old Seymour. So I love the fact that you can fold these things up, tuck them away in your truck, and when you pull them out and go, you can really hit the road in about 90 seconds. Now, this is the 2.0 version of this bike. They've made a few improvements to the design this year. Most notably, there is a, an adjustable suspension front fork that you can dial up or down the suspension. I believe this moves a total of 40 millimeters. They've got three inch wide tires. This was a big feature for us in being interested in these bikes because these bigger tires mean you're going to be able to take the bikes into a wider variety of terrain. We've had them in sand, we've had them in the woods, across pine straw, on grass, on gravel, and of course on asphalt. And they're a pretty good ride wherever you take them. So I really like the big tires. They have a sturdy rear rack that is apparently new and improved and it's already set up for accessories if you want to add baskets and pannier bags and so forth. The battery for this bike fits in this central area of the bike and it is a lithium ion battery that locks into place. You have a battery key and what I've discovered is if you want you can leave the battery in place in the body of the bike without really too many worries. Uh, in other words, if you can lift the bike, which for some of you is going to be a big if, you can leave the battery in place and you can actually recharge the battery right through the frame of the bike. They've got a hole in the side of the bike. You can plug in your AC adapter cord right there and charge up your battery. A fully depleted battery will take between four and six hours to fully charge. I wanna point out, by the way, these pedals also fold, which further compacts down the size of the bike. These bikes have a seven speed Shimano shifter, so you've got seven gears to choose from. They also have built in headlights and taillights that are battery powered, of course. They're great because they really increase your visibility when you're out there on the road. We have equipped our bikes with what's called the Comfort Package. It's basically a wider seat for those of us with wider buttocks areas. And I definitely count myself in that category. They also have a, kind of a suspension post beneath the seat that acts as a shock absorber and gives you a softer, more comfortable ride. In the rear, you can see the electric motor in this hub area. And that motor is a 500 watt motor, which can surge up to 800 watts. Yeah, I also want to point out that the bike comes with features like reflectors and fenders straight from the factory. And it's got disc brakes front and rear. Now, I can lift 63 pounds. That's right, these bikes weigh 63 pounds. So they're fairly heavy bikes. This is a steel frame, but I wouldn't want to carry this on my back for very long, if you know what I mean. So they may be too heavy for a lot of different bike 
storage rack options and you may not want to lift them up to put them on top of your tonneau cover or on top of your roof or whatever crazy bike storage solution you have figured out. So I'm just pointing that out, that they're fairly heavy bikes and they're made of steel, so they have the risk of rust developing over time. These bikes are weather resistant, but they're not weatherproof. I wouldn't advise storing the bikes anywhere that could get wet. And in fact, the company recommends that you store them in a dry place. Obviously, there's some sensitive electronics here. One of the upgrades of the 2.0 version of this bike is a better sealed control pad at the front. So this area of electronics is more protected from the elements. I think you could get this bike wet and it would be okay in light rain showers, but it's worth noting that water damage is not covered under warranty. So this is a long-winded way of saying I recommend that you keep the bikes dry if possible. If you have never ridden an electric bike, it's a lot of fun. I've heard it referred to as the e-bike smile, that sensation that people experience the first time they go for a ride on an e-bike. Because with an e-bike, you get the sensation and experience of riding a bicycle without a lot of the downside work. <laughs> I know all you hardcore bikers out there are cringing to hear me say this, but not everyone enjoys riding a bike up a steep mountain. <laughs> well, with these bikes, you do get a really healthy boost and that will take you with assistance up most reasonable hillsides. Now, if it's a super steep hill, then you may find that 500 watt motor is not quite gonna get it done. This handlebar is a 25 inch wide handlebar, which has been an upgraded in the 2.0 version. And that gives you more room to mount accessories. The bikes do not include, for example, a bell. On the right of the handlebar and the grip, there is a throttle. And you see, if I dial up the pedal assist to one, for example, and turn it, the bike will want to take off. Hey, settle down, partner. So if you're really, really lazy, you can just use the throttle and you don't have to pedal at all. Or if you really want to get a good workout, you can turn off all pedal assistance and just pedal and work it and pedal around that 63 pound bike. Overall, I love the experience of riding these e-bikes. Now I will point out that there's a little bit of lag between the time that you pedal and when you get that pedal assist. Now I personally enjoy cranking up my pedal assist all the way to 11, or in this case to five, and shooting out of the starting gate. <laughs> but a lot of people will not want to do that. In fact, I advise you don't do that. My wife would never do that. Christy keeps her bike in like pedal assist level one or two. There's a couple things I want to point out about these bikes. Uh, first of all, these are class two bikes, which means basically they'll go up to 20 miles per hour out of the box. But there is a little software tweak. You can get into the menu system of that control pad and you can make this one minor change to the software and they become class three bikes that can go up to 28 miles per hour. Now, in my experience, anything above 20 miles per hour on these bikes, and I'm getting a little bit nervous <laughs> because I don't really consider these necessarily to be high speed bikes. But with that said, I did, of course, dial my bike up to be a class three. So my bike would go 28 miles per hour. All right, so there is a little bit of lag with these bikes. So you'll pedal a couple of turns and then you'll feel the pedal assist kick in. I have mine at five right now. And so I'm doing 20 miles an hour, which is plenty fast. <laughs> Finally, let's talk about price. These bikes, are on sale right now for less than $1,000, $999. This comfort package is a $100 addition. So the price is actually very affordable. I think most people would call them an entry level electric bike, but in my opinion, you're getting a lot of bike for the money. You know, you're getting a 45 mile range, you're getting a bike that can go 28 miles per hour, you're getting the fat three inch wide tires. You know, some people are gonna say 500 watt motor may or may not work for them. 
for us, it has been sufficient in our uses for the bikes. I mean, for example, we recently went camping at Barber Motorsports Park and we didn't unhitch our rig for the entire weekend. It was so nice that we were able to hop on these electric bikes so we could take them all throughout different parts of the racetrack and not have to worry about riding the trams. I mean, there's nothing wrong with riding trams, but why ride a tram when you've got your own electric bike? So that's it guys, a look at the electric XP 2.0. If you haven't figured it out, we are very pleased with these bikes. I think we may have finally found a bike design that works for us. I especially love the portable nature of these bikes because they fold. I want something with minimal schlepping. I don't like doing a lot of schlepping when we camp. I got enough to schlep as it is. So I really like that these set up so quickly and they have a great range and a lot of great features for the price. So that's what I think. What do you think? Do you own a electric, electric bike? <laughs> if so, please chime in, post the comments, let us know how the bikes are working out for you. This has been yet another episode of Long Long Honeymoon where we say, lo lo ho. The foldability of these bikes. Is foldability a word? <laughs> I always thought it's funny, these hardcore bikers, they wanna get out there and get all this exercise and they get the lightest bike possible that makes it the easiest for them. If you really wanna get a good workout, shouldn't you be pedaling a heavy bike? I mean, how many weightlifters do you know that go out and get the lightest weight possible to work out? Am I right? All right guys, so we just had a gully washer thunderstorm here in the Loloho National Forest, and you can see how our ceramic coated aluminum airstream responds to the water. The ceramic coating is very hydrophobic and it really makes your RV much easier to clean. And I understand from Vinnie and Brian, they are now ceramic coating fiberglass which will protect your paint and RV decals and so forth. So highly recommend it. Check it out. Call Vinny, call Brian, get you some ceramic.